I want to give a brief introduction to matrix algebra uh, using Python, NumPy, and SciPy. Um, I'm planning on making some videos about tensor calculus inside Python, so I'm hoping that um, I will be able to point towards this video um, in future videos explaining why we have to use the modules that we have to use. Um, so hopefully you have seen some sort of matrix algebra before uh, in high school maybe or in college you've seen this um, you might have seen it in pre-calculus or finite math uh, and potentially linear algebra um, if you've taken linear algebra then this will be extremely easy to you um, otherwise it'll just serve as a brief introduction Perhaps you are taking those classes now, though. Okay, so I'm going to show how we can use um, the module NumPy and SciPy as a linear algebra calculator. And in future videos, when we talk about TensorFlow and we talk about machine learning, um, we can still use NumPy uh, for uh, certain uh, matrix algebra applications. Okay. So first, just a brief introduction uh, of matrix addition. Matrix addition is super, super, super simple. All you have to do is when you have a matrix, you just add entries for entries. So if you're going to add these two matrices, you're going to take the first entry plus the, this first entry, and that will make the first entry of the sum okay this looks complicated because this is the general way you do it but you just entries for entries it's super simple it's it works exactly like it should um, I will mention that the dimensions of the matrix the matrices have to be the exact same if they're not the same then we can't add these matrices together otherwise we can add them very easily okay so I made an example uh, a really simple example just so we can see how simple this is um, let's say I have matrix A and it's 1 2 3 4 I have matrix B it's 4 3 2 1 so how would you add these together it would just be 1 plus 4 which comes to the first entries 2 plus 3 here 3 plus 2 and 4 plus 1 here okay well, coincidentally, they all equal 5. They won't all equal the same number. Um, that just happened in this example. Okay. Um, so let's continue. Notice that A plus B is going to equal B plus A. Okay, these both equal the same matrix. They equal the same sum. Um and that's going to be true for you as long as two matrices have the same dimension then we can add them in any order if they do not have the same dimensions we can't add them at all but this says right here that matrix addition and subtraction I haven't talked about subtraction yet but matrix addition is commutative that means you can do it in either order A plus B is the same thing as B plus A it's really easy so that's what this is saying However, the dimensions of uh, the matrices must be equal. So the dimensions of A and B are equal here. Let's go back. Um, here we can see that we have two rows. These are rows. This is first row, second row. So I have two rows and I have two columns. Two columns. So this is a two by two. This is a two by two. So we can add. So if they didn't have the same dimensions, they have to be exactly the same, you can't add them. They have to be the same for you to be able to add them. Well, how are you going to do this in Python? Okay, so first we're going to have to import um, NumPy, but after that, we are going to um, add these matrices just like this. We have to set our matrix as a variable within Python. A equals NumPy dot matrix. This is telling um, calling NumPy, we're telling them it's a matrix, and this is how we're going to input um, the matrix A. Here we have the matrix B, 
we're calling NumPy, we're saying that this is a matrix, here it is, and you can do whatever you want at this point. I just want to demonstrate that we would print A plus B and print B plus A and show that it is the same thing. Well, we can talk about it, or we could actually do it. So here's my terminal. I'm going to go to Python. I'm going to import NumPy as MP. Okay. After that, I'm going to say A is equal to, and I'm going to call NumPy matrix. Okay. And it is the matrix, oops, one, two, and then semicolon. I think it was three, four, and close. Okay, so that's matrix A. Let's do matrix B equals numpy dot matrix. And this was, let me see what it was. I believe it was three, four, three, four, and was this two, one? Two, one. Okay, there we go. Now, okay, now let's just see what happens when we print A plus B. That's going to add that for us. Okay, um, I've done something wrong. I input in my B incorrectly. B equals numpy dot matrix and that equals four three two one there we go. There. Okay. Now let's print a plus B. Okay, there's our 5, 5 that we predicted. Now we can print B plus A. And this is also 5, 5. Which proves to me that um, it's going to be commutative. That you can add them in either order and get the same answer. However, we can actually just ask uh, Python to tell us whether that is true. So let's see, print a plus b equals equals, now this is going to, this is like asking a question, is it true that they are equivalent, b plus a, so this is a boolean, enter, and it says true, yes, this is true, a plus b is equivalent to b plus a, that's true with all entries, okay, and that's going to be true with adding any matrices. So the only thing we have to keep in mind with adding matrices is that they have to be the same dimensions. Okay, otherwise we can't do it. And here, this is the code that we used. Okay. Now, this is the general rule. Sometimes you'll see this um, on cheat sheets or maybe on Wikipedia or something that's really going to condense the idea down. They're using this sum notation. This has two indices. These are the indices within the matrix. So say we have the very first uh, indice. That's going to be 1, 1. So A11 plus B11 would be 1, 1 in the new matrix. So this is just a very condensed version of what we did. Okay. Now, matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is just slightly more complicated than matrix addition. However, um, it's not too bad. This is the condensed version of how you would write that down. So matrix A times matrix B, um, that particular matrix entries IJ will be the sum as AIK times BKJ as um, the sum um, goes from K equals 1 to the N dimensions. Okay. 
Well, that might not make any sense to you whatsoever, so let's look at an example. Here, I have the same matrices, A, 1, 2, 3, 4, as we did in the previous example, B equals 4, 3, 2, 1, and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply those two matrices. So I'm going to multiply this matrix times this matrix, and here's how it works. First, you take the rows of the first one, so there's 1, 2 times 4, 2, so it's 1 times 4 plus 2 times 2, and that's what we see here. 1 times 4 plus 2 times 2. Okay, then you do the first row times the second column. Okay, so it'd be 1 times 3 plus 2 times 1. Second row, first column, four time, 3 times 4 plus 4 times 2. And then second row times second column, 3 times 4, 4 times 1. Okay, so please notice that if you want to make this entry in AB, well, what is this 8? Okay, that's the answer for the entry, but what is this? This is first row, first column. That tells you how to get that entry. First row, first column. So that can kind of tell you how you should get it. This is first row, second column. So this is first row, second column. Second row, first column. Second row times first column, here we are. And second row, second column, and that's that 13. Okay, so that's how you do it. And I also want to show you that B times A is not going to be the same thing. B times A would be first row times first column. Okay, 4 times 1 plus 3 times 3. First row times second column, 4 times 2 plus 3 times 4. Then we have second row, first column, 2 times 1 plus 1 times 3. And second row times second column, 2 times 2 plus 1 times 4. And here we go. Okay, so we can see that they have similar entries, but totally different um, positions. Okay, these are different. So A times B is not equal to B times A, okay? They're not equal. Sometimes you'll have totally different looking matrices. So um, never assume that A times B times B times A, that you can do it in either order because you can't. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Matrix multiplication is not commutative, which means it does matter which order that you do it in, okay? Now, let's look at the code, because that's what we're doing right now. Let's look at um, how you would do this in Python. Okay, so let's pull up here. Um, now, I already have my A uh, typed in here, so I'll just show you that. Print A, and there it is. Print B. Okay, so that's the same as before. Now, I want to multiply them. Print A times B. Okay, there it is. Print B times A. And there it is. And we can see they are not the same. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. I can prove it to you, or I can have Python prove it to you. A times B. Is that equivalent to B times A? And this is a boolean, it's either true or false, and we see that it's false. So Python is agreeing with me that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay, so that's something you have to keep in mind, have to keep in mind. Alright, now comes a complicated thing where we talk about the dimensions of multiplying, okay? Here, if a, um, let's see, this is for addition, this is just a refresher. Um, if you want to add um, matrices, they have to have the exact same dimensions. However, for matrix multiplication, what has to happen is the um, columns of the first have to be equal to the rows of the second. So if A has N times N, then B is either going to have to have N 
m times n or m times m uh, it can be different but the um, here you can see the second dimension has to be equal to the first dimension here or the columns have to be equal to the rows now in my example we were dealing with two by twos so I can I could legally multiply them in either order however you have to keep this in mind um, when you want to multiply matrices and what Python will do is it knows about this as well and it will just give you an error on the dimension it will give you a dimension error there okay so you have to keep that in mind now uh, let's go on to something called the identity matrix okay the identity matrix is basically the number one inside matrix algebra so in regular algebra we have the number one um, that has very specific properties such as if you multiply anything times one it equals itself that's true with the identity matrix so anything times the identity matrix is itself okay and another uh, strange property of the identity matrix is that it can be any size that you require it doesn't matter it will always have ones on the diagonal and zeros for everything else so it can be as big or as small this is a one by one this is two by two and this is as big as you please okay you can go as big as you want you can go a billion times a billion um, and the identity matrix is um, as large as you want it to be or as small as you want it to be here we have a one by one that would be as small as it could go um, so it can be as big as you want and it'll act as the number one inside matrix algebra so anything times itself or anything times the identity matrix is itself that's something to keep in mind now I wrote null here I should have wrote zero matrix so the zero matrix is just some matrix that is all zeros um, now the identity matrix is always square it's always a square it always has either one by one two by two three by three four by four zero matrix is much more scalable and it can be any size you require whatsoever just as long as it's all zeros that is the zero matrix so it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be square so that's something to keep in mind it works just like the number zero did in regular algebra so anything times zero is zero and um, that is something to keep in mind so here this is the zero matrix and it can be any size that you want it can be a one by one it can be anything here we have a two by four here we have a three by four we can have a four by four we can have any size we want zero matrix um, and those are really important in any kind of algebra system okay so here is the code that we can actually look at um, those examples this is how you would call upon an identity matrix of a one by one identity matrix of a two by two identity matrix of a three by three and this is an identity matrix of a billion times a billion let's actually pull that up so here I'm gonna say um, MP identity of three and there we can see it there is the identity matrix of a three by three you can see that the zeros are anywhere other than the diagonal and this will act as a number one in matrix algebra and I can do that with any number I want there's a two by two there's a one by one and whoop. I don't think it goes that big, maybe. There's 100 by 100, that's pretty big. So, notice that the identity matrix is always square, it's always square, 
and it only has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now I said it acts just like the number one does, so if I go print, print a times mp identity, and that was a two by two, so I need a two by two. And we can see we just get a back. We just get a back. Um, let's have even more fun. Let's see if a Python agrees with me that any matrix times the identity matrix is just going to be itself. And it says that that is true. Let's see if that's true with B. It's going to be, but. Whoop. Oh, because I said that A was equal. So here I have to go. There it is. There it is. Yeah. A is not equal to B. That's true. Okay. But B times the identity matrix is B. That's very true. Okay. So let's go back. And here I talked about the zeros. Now, the identity matrix is always square, so it only needs one dimension called upon it. But with the zeros, it can be any size that you require. It's just going to be a bunch of zeros. So here I have a zero matrix with 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so MP zeros. And let's do 4. So that is a 1 by 4. Okay, let's do 4 by 2. Let's see what that looks like. Whoops. Two by four. I think I have a syntax error here. I think it has to have double. Yes. So if my notes are wrong. I need to change that. I have a. Uh, double parentheses for this to work and here we have a 2 by 4 let's look at the other example I was trying to pull up 4 by 2 okay so you can make it a zero matrix any size that you require you just have to use the double parentheses so I need to change my notes there okay now now we're really going to start getting into matrix algebra so in regular algebra, anything uh, divided by itself would equal 1. So A divided by A equals 1, just like 2 divided by 2 equals 1. Well, we have that in matrix algebra too, but we call it the inverse matrix, since we can't really divide by a matrix that doesn't really make sense. So A times its inverse equals the identity matrix, which is like the number 1. And you can do this in either order and it will work. So A times its inverse equals the identity matrix. Just like in regular algebra, 2 divided by 2 equals 1, or A divided by A equals 1. We have this in ma uh, matrix algebra as well. Let's look at an example. So here I have the normal A that I've been using for my examples, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here I have A times its inverse equals the identity. Well, what is its identity matrix? Because it's there's some other matrix called its identity that if you multiply these two, you get the identity matrix. Here, I've already done it. I've already solved it somehow. I'll show you in a minute. But here you can actually see what that matrix would have to be. So I claim that this matrix times this matrix will equal the identity matrix. Here's the code of how you do that. Uh, so we are going to have to unfortunately uh, call upon one more module to be able to complete this. We have to from SciPy import linalg. So this is just linear algebra. And then linear, so we call upon linear algebra and we say linear algebra find me the inverse of A. And what it's going to do is it's going to find 
this matrix, which is the inverse of this matrix, which is defined. If you multiply them together, you'll get the identity matrix. Let's do that right now. Okay. So I'm going to have to import. Um, I think it was import from uh, from SciPy import linear algebra. From SciPy import lin out and it's not pi like the number it's from sci pi is in python um, import lin out okay now let's find the inverse Let's find the inverse of linear algebra dot inverse of A. So we want to find the inverse of A. Lin alg dot inverse of A. And here we see it's going to be the decimal res representation. Computers prefer decimals than fractions. So here we have the inverse of, um, of A here. So that means that A times its inverse should equal the identity matrix. Okay, let's see. Print A times uh, lin alg dot inverse of A and here. Okay, so I want to show you this. Um, there's a lot of discussion on the internet and what it's doing is there's a slight rounding error inside this module. So here we see it's 8.88, let's call it 8.9 times 10 to the negative 16th. So that is very close to zero. It should be zero and it's not zero. And what's happening is there's a slight rounding error for this. So it's very close, to, if you can imagine, it's 0 0.15 zeros and then 888. That's what we're looking at here. So there is a slight rounding error inside this module. And I believe that's what it's, um, it's doing that because of speed. So it's trying to do it as fast as it possibly can and it's coming up with this rounding error. Um, and so there are different... Um, uh, modules or different procedures that you can do if you require different accuracies. This of course is going to work for us but um, if you're mm, doing something else you might want to keep this in mind that there is going to be slight rounding errors. Here we see that it's 1.00 and then e to the 0 so this is just one this is just zero but there is this slight rounding error here so that's something to keep in mind okay. now system of equations is one of the uh, most popular uses of matrix algebra um, here I have three equations three linear equations I have x y z and they all equal 10. Now this, these three will form a system and on some, uh, some types of problems you would have to find what X, Y, and Z exactly equal to um, in this system. So you would want to solve what does X, Y, and Z equal. You can do this with inside Python. Okay, so first what you do this is different than the previous examples we've done so we have to do um, we have to make what's called a coefficient matrix okay you can see um, so I have one two two and I believe this is a misprint I should have three five three three five three so this is a misprint I should have that then 518, and this is 318. 
so I need to change this. Okay, and then here's the B matrix, 10, 8, 3, here, there we go. Okay, now I claim that this is going to be the solution. Let's see if that's actually true, and how on earth would you do it? First, what you have to do is you have to input that new coefficient matrix. So you have to put in your coefficient matrix, then you have to put in your solution matrix. That's what B is, this 10, 8, 3 here. 10, 8, 3. We have to call on NumPy, linear algebra, solve the system for me, and solve it for A, B. Okay, let's do that right now. So I'll need to peek at this while I enter it. Okay, so now I'm going to enter this. So I'm going to say um, A is equal to the matrix. And it's equal to the matrix 1, 3, 5, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 8. B is equal to the matrix. Eight, three. Okay. Now I want to solve it, so I need to use this code here. So I need, I want to say numpy um, from linear algebra solve a b. Okay. And here we go. So here's some proof. Um, here. This is the solution to that. So this tells me what x is, right here. This tells me what y equals. And this tells me what z equals. And here we have the solution. Okay, so, um, so you can solve with NumPy. You can solve system of linear equations. Um, I apologize for this coefficient. I I'm not sure how I mistyped it so badly, but um, so here you need to use the coefficients of these variables. Okay, so one, three, five, two, five, one, two, three, eight. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. And here's the code. Okay, um, we also need to talk about the transpose of matrices. Um, this is super easy, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, in matrix algebra, you will have a transpose of matrix. All it is is switching the rows into columns and the columns into rows. So I have 1, 2, 1, 2. I have 3, 4, 3, 4. So this comes up a lot in matrix algebra where you need to call upon the transpose. NumPy has got you covered. You just say NumPy, find the transpose of A, and it's as simple as that. So NumPy has you covered there. And lastly, um, maybe just as a trailer or a teaser for the next video, um, I have some more advanced topics that I didn't have time to cover here, and one of them I think is a blatant um, thing that I need to cover, and that is determinants. I'm going to need to cover determinants. They're super important inside matrix algebra. Um, NumPy, of course, has us covered there, um, but we're going to need to go over that. Um, the reason I didn't, I, I should say, the reason why I didn't cover determinants is they can, they're very easy to describe how to get them, and it can be somewhat uh, complicated if you don't already know of why you need them. So I felt that, that was going to take um, quite a bit of time just to explain um, where or why you would use them versus how you get them. It's very quick to describe how you get them. Uh, for same reasons for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can find them very quickly inside NumPy, but I felt that it was probably going to take me a while to explain why you would need them. Um, but they are very important. Cross products. Um, depending on what type of um, 
mm, school or field that you're working on, cross products can be extremely important. Um, you, of course, can do them inside Python and, and NumPy, um, but with cross products, I'm going to have to probably introduce the idea of unit vectors or um, maybe position, and I felt that that was probably going to take me a little bit more time. Um, Markov chains, if you're dealing with probability, these are a very specific type of matrix. Um, they're the probability of a system and um, I thought it was probably going to take me a little bit more time to explain um, what Markov trains were and what those solutions are telling me and stable vectors are very related to um, Markov chains and they'll tell us the long-term effects of a system um, going um, in the long run. Um, very interesting problems but I felt that it was probably going to warrant at least another video. So I plan on making a video about these um, topics, so look out for part two, possibly part three, depending on um, how much time it would take to explain these topics. Um, I will also say that for these three topics, um, I will highly suggest a video by three um, I think it's three blue, one brown, or three brown, one blue videos. Um, he um, explains it in a visual aspect better than I've seen anywhere else in textbooks um, or anywhere else on the internet. It really is um, absolute masterpiece of how he explains linear algebra in those videos. Um, he did not go, uh, unfortunately, he did not go into these topics, so I will give those a go, but... Um, that, I think, is enough for one video. I hope this is helpful. I hope this at least gets you started. Um, you can do um, a very large amount with just these few topics now. Um, so now you can add matrix matrices. You can subtract them. Now you can uh, multiply them. And you can sort of divide them by using the inverse matrix. So I hope this is helpful. Um, if it is or isn't, please post in the comment section, but until then, I will talk to you next time.